Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be taking a look at Kamala Khan and Sunbird, since Sunbird is so awful that I couldn't put him in his own video. Because people probably already know just how good Kamala Khan's or Miss Marvel's new uniform is, to make the video a little bit more interesting, I'm testing a hybrid build for her, or a CTP of Destruction with the Strike proc, just to see how good that holds up in PvE, as well as to see if she has any kind of value in PvP. Most people that had Sunbird already built up or built him up recently probably have a CTP of Destruction to get penetration on his Awakening skill and his skills 1 through 5. For this video though, I'm testing a CTP of Authority, just to give you an idea of how Invincible works for him. For the first few tests, before I go into the high stages of World Boss Legend, I'm actually not using a damage proc, just using a regular obelisk with Invincible. When I first tested her, I was able to complete a stage 99 of Thanos well under 2 minutes, which is usually around the soft cap with all the phase changes and animations. One of the other first signs that the character was really strong for PvE was that I was able to take down a stage 99 of Proxima well under 40 seconds, which is actually faster than some other characters that do have a proc. It also helps that her fifth skill has all defense down that scales very quickly, going up by 10% to a maximum of 50%. Just to put into perspective how massive the uniform upgrade is, with the old uniform, no leadership or strikers, and on stage 9 of null, I actually wasn't able to complete the first phase in 2 minutes or with 3 minutes remaining, which is the cutoff for actually completing the fight. With the new uniform, however, not only was I able to complete the stage, but in the same amount of time, I was able to do 30 more bars of damage. Out of the many uniforms and characters I've tested, I don't think I've seen such a massive increase for a single uniform for one character, specifically in PvE. Because the character was so easy to play, and because she did so well on the lower stages, I decided to go to the highest stage that I felt she could do without a damage proc, and she finished that with well over a minute remaining which for those who don't know the significance of that is that she is basically on par if not better than Makari. Also keep in mind that this is a mid-level build, so I'm not using things like Odin's or even her artifact, so without the damage proc she still has room to go even higher and complete this stage much faster. I also took her into a Mephisto stage 39 to see if she could do that, but I was playing a little bit too risky and ended up dying with about a minute remaining. However, I noticed that she was doing about 5 bars of damage with her ultimate rotation and anywhere from 2 to 3 bars with her regular rotation. So if you take that into consideration, I think that she might have been able to actually complete this stage or get very close with about anywhere from 1 to 3 or 4 bars remaining. On the no type advantage day or the speed day for Dormammu, I was actually able to complete the first phase in under 2 minutes, which means that she might have been able to complete this fight for me, again with no damage proc. Because she did so well in those initial tests, I decided to give her a CTP of destruction with the strike proc. However, if you do want to build her at the highest level for PvE, since she does have guard break immunity built into her kit, a CTP of energy is likely your best option since she is very proc friendly and has a very high number of hits. I've also seen people use a CTP of rage, which is likely fine, but I still believe that the highest level of performance will be given by a CTP of energy, mostly because it can be reforged, but also because she does function very similar to Moon Knight. And Moon Knight, as you may or may not know, does work really well with the CTP of energy across many different modes, including Giant Boss Raid and ABX even. You can again see just how crazy the upgrade is, since I was able to take down a stage 49 of Null with that CTP of destruction, and over 2 minutes remaining. What I found even crazier is that I was actually able to take down stage 58, as you can see in this image, and even stage 59 of Null with that mighty CTP of Destruction. This was pretty amazing for me since I also have a brilliant CTP of Judgment on Luna, and she doesn't perform as well as Kamala with that mighty CTP of Destruction. On the higher stage of 54, Mephisto on the other hand, she does even better because she has that type advantage and I was able to complete the stage with well over 2 minutes remaining. You can see just how much of a powerhouse Kamala is in PvE, and I've even seen screenshots of people doing stage 99 of Null with her. 
The best part of her uniform is that not only is she really strong for PvE and a very cheap character since she is a free-to-play option, but her skill rotation is very easy as well. Her rotation is basically 2 cancel 1 cancel 3, which you delay cancel after she kind of shoots out one of the purple orbs, and then you do 4 cancel 5. After this, you'll get your T3 with the next rotation, which is just doing a 5, cancel 3, delay cancel 4, cancel 6. You start off with canceling 5 this time around because you want your ultimate to be filled up as fast as possible, so that once you finish your regular rotation, you can just go straight into the ultimate. Sometimes when you do your regular rotation and then the ultimate fills, it might be difficult to activate the ultimate and you might end up missing the proc on it. For this particular test, Dormammu is blast type, so Kamala does have the type advantage, but regardless, she is able to complete the fight with 4 minutes and 30 seconds left, which is pretty amazing, again, considering that I'm not using her artifact, and that makes a big deal in the second phase, where the instinct value is boosted up. I don't know how Kamala stacks up to Makari on the speed hero female restriction for ABX, However, if you don't have Makari built up, she actually does quite well in that mode since she also does have Silence and Paralysis on her skills. She has Paralysis on her 2nd, 5th, and Ultimate, and Silence on her 5th skill, which means that you can use her for at least 2 of the 3 seasons for AVX. With the Mighty Destruction, I was able to score near 9 million, which I'm sure would probably be over 10 million with the CTP of Energy, and probably even higher with a better build. Her amazing value in PvE is pretty clear, but I wanted to see if she had any kind of value in PvP, not really in timeline since you kind of need meta skills in there such as things like revive or iframe ignore at the very least, but if she could do anything potentially in Alliance Conquest, depending on whether she did okay in timeline. The first couple of tests that I did were with an Invincible Obelisk, so this is before I equipped the Destruction, just to see how she would do with a defensive build. Although the character doesn't have a PvP kit, she does have at least 50% defenses on her uniform passive, as well as 30% damage mitigation and another 55% defense proc on her 5th skill. She natively also has guard break immunity and super armor, meaning that she is more resistant to super guard break, usually from characters like Sentry. On top of that, her base damage is also good, meaning that she can potentially take out opponents fairly quickly before they can start to get going and use their really powerful skills, specifically ones that have iframe ignore and things like that. Despite that high base damage, the lack of penetration really hurts her, since if opponents can go into invincible, high base damage doesn't really matter at all. Because of that, she was struggling against characters like Thanos and Doom, who tend to iframe a lot and have Invincible in their kit, as well as in frequent builds. Despite the character having high defenses and mitigation, as well as that Invincible Obelisk, it didn't really do much for her survival, because she would still end up dying from characters like Spider-Man, Thanos, or Doctor Doom, usually when they would go into their iframes. I also tested her old uniform with the T3 upgrade, and although it was decent because it had that self debuff and the higher HP, her fourth skill leaves her very vulnerable because she doesn't have an iframe on it and the animation is really long, meaning that she'll usually get killed during this time if she's trying to deal damage with it, or she'll get interrupted and the whole skill will basically be useless. I found that I had the most ideal results when I used her latest uniform, and had that CTP of Destruction, which not only gave me the penetration to go through characters that had Invincible, but also increased her burst damage substantially, meaning that she could even take out characters like Doom or Thanos before their Invincible procced, or before they started to really get going. Even though she still ended up dying to Spider-Man, which she did with the Invincible build as well, she was capable of taking out Thanos and Doom, as you'll see here, but she also got really close to taking out Warlock as well, since that third skill lingers on, and even after she dies, it can potentially take out an opponent. She won't be able to survive Doom's second life because of his long iframe, but if you don't want the character for PvE and want to build her for Alliance Conquest, then I would still recommend a CTP of Destruction over something like a CTP of Transcendence or a survival-based build. 
Before I end the video, I'm gonna quickly cover Sunbird, since, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, he really isn't worth showcasing in his own video. There isn't really anything good I can say about his uniform upgrade, since it doesn't really provide any value to the character and barely increases his support capabilities. His improvement is basically comparable to a side character upgrade in 2017 or 2018 at best. Even though I wasn't using a damage proc, I was barely able to clear stage 9 of Null, which is absolutely ridiculous for a premium character, considering there are characters that are free to play that can do it twice or three times as fast. Take Kamala, for example. The fact that I could barely clear the first phase of stage 19 in two minutes indicates that this uniform is basically useless for PvE. It means that he can barely complete stage 19 with no damage proc, which you saw compared to Kamala, she could complete stage 29 with no damage proc and with a full minute left over. Sure, Kamala may be an extreme example to compare the character to, but this is a premium character that can't do stage 19 with his latest uniform. That is pretty bad. So the character clearly isn't designed for PvE, so I obviously tested him in PvP as well, but his performance there was barely an improvement from when he didn't have a uniform. Because I had a CTP of Authority previously equipped on him, I decided to test him with that, but most people will likely run him with a CTP of Destruction for the same reason that they'll have it on Blue Dragon, to get penetration across his skills 1 through 5, and penetration on that Awakening skill. I'd say that one good thing from the uniform is that the fourth skill seems to have high skill priority, it's a full iframe, and it does seem to do a decent amount of damage. This should synergize well with destruction, since you'll likely be able to attack first, and with a damage proc and penetration, might be able to one-shot the opponent, before they probably will do that to you. The character's AI isn't really great either, he basically just uses the fourth skill, and because the animation is so long, the fourth skill usually resets again, so he basically just keeps spamming the fourth skill. Although this isn't too bad because the fourth skill is a full iframe, it doesn't allow him to get the benefits of his other skills 1 through 5, specifically the 3 and 5, which only really activate if the opponent is basically knocked out of the third skill. One of the other few benefits to the uniform is that his skills do have lingering damage, which means that if the character dies, he can potentially take out the opponent from those skills lingering on. If you're wondering why I'm using a CTP of Authority but advocating a CTP of Destruction, it's because when I use him in Alliance Conquest, I kind of wanted the Awakening skills from the Warriors of the Sky to be staggered, because if they all died at one time and awakened at one time, if the opponent had something like a mighty CTP of regen to interrupt the awakenings, it would just stop all of them. I didn't really have much chance to test these characters in Alliance Conquest, but you can see even from the first test that I did that Sunbird ended up dying before Shadow Shell. I'm hoping that Shadow Shell and War Tiger also get uniforms so we can kind of mix up this team, but you can clearly see that Blue Dragon is obviously the standout character and can potentially one-shot most of the opponents fairly quickly. However, she is fairly susceptible to Reflect because most of her damage lingers around. I did one solo test with Kamala versus some revive metas to see how she would handle that, and surprisingly enough, she almost did win this matchup, but ultimately ended up dying versus Mephisto because he stayed in his long iframe, and obviously Kamala doesn't have iframe ignore. So if you do pair her up with a character that does have iframe ignore, she might end up forming a pretty decent mid-level team. So just to summarize, I would highly recommend picking up Kamala's uniform because you can build her pretty much with any kind of CTP and she'll definitely do well. However, if you want the character to excel in PvE, a CTP of energy is your best option. And if you do want some added value in PvP, then a CTP of destruction is a decent middle ground. Sunbird's uniform, on the other hand, is an easy skip, and even as an Alliance Conquest player, I would say that it doesn't really add too much value to the character. This uniform seems even worse, considering that the character is a bio sub or a premium one, and Kamala isn't, yet she performs better not only in PvE, but from what I saw, better in PvP as well. Anyways, that does it for this one. I'm curious to see what drops with the next mid-months or next full patches. We're probably going to get playable gore sometime soon, hopefully as a 
actually good native T3, and Black Widow has also been de-demined as a T4 character in the future. We might also get uniforms for the rest of the Warriors of the Sky, and hopefully they aren't nearly as bad as the one for Sunbird. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video, and if you did enjoy it, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing it with others, since it might help them out, and it definitely helps me out too. However, the video is now over.